Hello there, one and all, and welcome to episode 399 of Love at First Scent with me, Percy Lays, live on YouTube. Thank you very much for tuning in, whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording. First comment for this video goes to EcoJock, who says, hi all, and then Ty is quickly there as well saying, hello, missed the other live, so this one it is. It's been a long day. I've heard good things about this house. Okay. Well, thank you for taking us straight to the heart of the matter. Hello, by the way, everybody else. Natasha's here as well. So is BJR. So is Rachel. So is Pradeep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, but thank you for, for taking us straight, as I say, into the subject at hand, um, because we are going to be talking mainly about this scent here from the house of Bully, or I should say, is it Bully 1803? Now, um, I had to review this. How could I not review a perfume that is called Patate douce de Caraïbes et Carotte d'Afghanistan? So sweet potatoes of the Caribbean and carrot of Afghanistan. And yes, in more ways than one, that is a mouthful. Um, but let's just talk very, very generally about um, Bouli. Uh, there, there's plenty of information out there on the net about the house. It, it did. It was. It was genuinely originally founded in 1803, but then it kind of died a death and disappeared. I'm not sure exactly when. And it was only uh, sort of rediscovered in the 21st century by somebody. And I'm looking on here because I always, always forget these individuals' names, and I don't want to get them wrong. Right. It was rediscovered by Ramdan Tuhami and Victoire de Tayak Tuhami, a couple, and actually. They also had something to do with the revival of Trudon, which is the brand that we were talking about in the previous video. But anyway, put that to one side for the moment. And they rebranded it as uh, Bully 1803 and re re sort of reopened it as a kind of beauty emporium with a very, very kind of old school apothecary kind of aesthetic and look. Um, a really, really beautiful look, I think. In in London, their main counter, their sort of flagship counter is at Selfridges. And I, I think it's stunning. I took some pictures the other day and I'll try to post them on social media or maybe even on the YouTube community tab. Um, I think it's it, it's it, it works so brilliantly in that ultra modern, sometimes quite clinical interior of Selfridges because you've got these beautiful shelves, you know, sort of floor to ceiling shelves and wooden paneling and beautiful marble style of countertops. Um, and yes, they do perfumes, but they also do body lotions and soaps and quirky things like crazy expensive toothbrushes and hairbrushes and combs, I'm sure they've got as well. I know they did a range of paper soaps, as in, you know, sort of disposable one-time use um, soap, soap paper that you can, you know, you sort of run underwater and it turns into soap. Uh, uh, they sell essential oils that you can use as beauty treatments. Um, uh, Gavin says, is this the stand just past Hermès? Ooh, I don't know Selfridges that well, but you may be right. Yeah, I think it was close to Hermès, as in not Hermès, no, the, I was going to say not Hermes perfume, but they did have their perfumes as well. I, you may, I think, let's do some Selfridges geography. I think if you come in from the eastern entrance of Selfridges, that is where, but you can, you, you, you'll find it. If you go there, you'll find it. But what's interesting is that hardly any of you ever write to me asking if I'm going to review such and such from Bully. Um, I get lots and lots of emails and messages from you, uh, which are always very, very welcome. I'm very grateful to receive them. You know, people say, are you going to review this? Are you going to review that? You know, this one's come out. Are you going to review it? Uh, and, and a lot of the time, it's the same brands that you ask me about. I don't think I have um, ever had a, an email from you about a bully or a message from you, even though I have covered their work. You may remember a little while ago, they did some sense in collaboration with the Louvre. I'm sure I did a video on some of them. We talked about those. They went down quite well. By the way, it seems some of those are coming back, but they're going to have different names. So they're not going to be so obviously linked to Louvre artworks anymore. Um, Woozy says, I feel like Bully is a bit gimmicky with their aesthetic and water perfumes. Um, well, yes, I, I can see why you would think that, but it's a brand that does seem to have struck a chord particularly in Asia. They have lots of shops in Japan. I can see their aesthetic going down very, very well in, in, in some of those beautiful, stunning um, Japanese department stores. And as somebody said, 
Yes, they, they have their own thing, right? So they don't have alcohol-based perfumes. This is one that I've brought here from their main range. Um, so their bottles are normally white like this with this kind of very heavy metallized uh, cap. This is their Oud. We may have uh, time to talk about it in a moment. And their formulations are called Au Triple. And they are water-based. And it means that you're meant to kind of give them a shake before you spray. And they come out as a as, as, as sort of very visibly opaque white liquid. Um, Rachel says, I've heard it's best to keep alcohol-free fragrances in the fridge. Um... I confess I haven't heard that, but then, but then, as we all know, it's probably best to keep any fragrances in the fridge. Anyway, so that's all context. A few months ago, uh, very, very recently, maybe no more than two months ago, they released a, a, a sort of sub-range of six perfumes, which they are calling um, French gardens, Le Jardin Francais, okay? Inspired by, I'm reading now, a very old collection of seeds and seedlings by the passion and curiosity of 18th and 19th century botanists, the series of scents Le Jardin Francais brings back to life an intoxicating and unique palette of garden fragrances. Um, they all seem to be seized by the morning dew during a morning stroll through the vegetable garden and orchard between rows of plants coming from the farthest ends of the world, acclimatized since antiquity by patient monks, meticulous collectors and erudite healers, all genius gardeners and gatherers, like a miraculous harvest in a universal garden with freshly raked paths adorned with rare flowers, these armfuls of familiar vegetables and simple herbs, these aromatic, sunny, delicious bouquets delight the senses and the heart. I'm so pleased that that sentence did actually grammatically end. I was really worried about lots of dangling <laughs> phrases and participles there, but no, they, they didn't happen. They rescued it. So what do we have? We have got, as you know, a sweet potato and carrot. I think each one has got two ingredients. There is an Iraqi beetroot with an Egyptian rhubarb. I'm going to be so hungry at the end of this. There is an Oriental watercress, whatever that means, don't shoot the messenger, an Oriental watercress with a Sardinian parsley. And then we also have an Indian cucumber with Syrian mint, an Andean verbena with ulu basil, and a Scandinavian red currant with a Peruvian tomato. Each one of these bottles will set you back 160 euros. So you really, really need to like your vegetables and your greens if you want to part with these. Um, I had a very, very quick sniff of them, a really quick sniff of them, um, at the Selfridges counter. And what can I say based just on initial sniff? All six were very, very interesting. All six came across as very convincingly, um, naturalistic. You know, the verbena did the thing you would expect the verbena to do. You know, it was just really, really zingy and sharp and citrusy and green and, and delicious. Um, the, the cucumber and mint I was quite taken with as well. It did start taking me a little bit into the sort of regions of things like cucumber writer or mastochiar, which some, you know, Farsi speakers will, will know what that is. Um, but, you know, having to make a snap decision, I was most taken with the sweet potato and carrot, you know, partly because I thought sweet potato, you know, you've got to have a perfume <laughs> that's meant to smell of sweet potato. And also, um... Because I suppose um, out of the six of them, it was the one that was the most overtly perfumey. The other ones, the other ones were sort of fresher, more cologne-like, more citrusy things. I liked the beetroot and rhubarb as well, but it was very, very heavy on the rhubarb. Whereas I thought it might have been interesting. Uh, personally, I would have liked it if it might have explored the territory of things like, you know, Comme de Garçon Rouge. Um, so. Let, let's let's spray this one. So give it a shake. Um, and out it comes. And probably somebody will tell me I'm doing completely the wrong thing by spraying it on paper, but I've, I've got to. Um, and yeah, it's... Okay, so you know, there's, a, there's a little bit of perfumer slyness going on here as well, because it says, you know, Af Afghani carrot. Now we know, you know, that carrot seed is not a million miles away in terms of olfactory profile from iris. And a lot of 
strongly iris-based perfumes open with a carrot seed note. Um, and this is what you get here. So you get something that is quite curiously, but really, really quite deliciously, wonderfully starchy and textural. You know, you, 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 can, you can sort of feel that this is the kind of texture that you could cut through. Um, but, but these potatoes have been boiled, okay? So they're not raw, you know, so they're, they're ready to eat. They've been boiled or steamed and they're ready to go. And that dryness, powderiness, paperiness of the iris, carrot, irisy type note, links so well with the starchiness and the gentle sweetness of the potato. And then so what, what you actually feel like you're getting, um, what you actually feel like you're getting, and, you, and this becomes even more pronounced when you wear it, is you're getting a, a kind of sweetly ambery perfume with a starchy powdery note at the top. Um, and it's it's really, really charming. Um, I, w w before I left the counter, what I did as well is I took their perfumed oil of this because each one also comes as a perfumed oil. And I put some of the oil on um, the back of my hand and then sprayed some of the perfume on the back of my hand as well. And I really, really wanted to go as long as I possibly could without washing my hands. I what I should have done was actually sort of sprayed a little bit ab above my wrist. Um, and I kept smelling it and thinking, this is really interesting. This is really good because it kind of is what it says it is, you know, like sort of weirdly potatoey and carroty, but it's also very legitimately perfumey. Um, Rachel says, I think I'd like the smell of sweet potato and carrot perfume. I think you would. I mean, the, there's, there's nothing to dislike here. It's not, it's not cloying. It's not overly sweet. It's not overly um, suffocating. But it does also have enough to sustain interest. Um, I, th I think it's, 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 you know, interesting. Whether it's, it's worth 160 euros of, of your money, you know, we had the price discussion um in the in the other video just now what do they say about it by the way let's um let's it, it's just a very very um brief description here which i do not intend to read to you in french because i think that would make the number of subscribers on this channel vanish straight away the eau triple caribbean sweet potato and afghan carrot from the collection le jardin francais reveals its soft and intense notes sublimated by spices and vetti there this water-based fragrance wraps the skin like velvet without being overwearing and yeah i would i would go with descriptions like velvety and soft and enveloping because because as a, as as a perfume in terms of its profile it, it is like a kind of ambery scent. Um, Rachel says, for water-based perfumes, you really just have to have a superb chemical structure of ingredients to make sure no bacteria grows, just good chemistry. And I wonder if they actually say things on the packaging, like, you know, make sure you store in, um, in a refrigerator. I mean, I mean you know, I would, I would have thought they, clearly they've done their homework because in case you weren't aware, th this is now an LVMH company. I think they were bought bought up by LVMH three years ago maybe or two years ago and the list of ingredients on the back certainly is pretty long um, and I don't intend to read it to you now. A quick mention of their oud, this is their oud de Medine, so oud from Medina. Um, I suppose this one, you know, if memory serves, it, it doesn't bring anything especially new to the universe of oud scents. But if, if you want that oody, saffrony, rosy, familiar thing, but for whatever reason you want it to feel a little bit more sheer, a little bit more translucent, um, which is maybe the effect of, you know, having it as a water-based perfume, then you could go for this. But let's go for the pre-sprayed, let's go for the pre-sprayed potato. <laughs> pre-sprayed potato. How's it doing on the blotter? Yeah, and it's... It absolutely is still doing the exact same thing, but maybe that kind of dryness, irisiness of the carrot has disappeared, and it's now much more about the sort of sweeter, gentler, softer, soft, softer, sweeter, gentler, softer, more vanillic notes, ambery notes. Um, but it also somehow manages to be fun. And I think all of those descriptions that they gave of, you know, people, um, you know, monks looking for herbal cures to things, it, it does kind of have that vibe to it because 
because there's just something really, really curious about that combination of the, the the potato with the carrot. What have you some of some of you been saying? Ty says I love eating sweet potatoes and carrots. In fact, they were my first food fixations, as I like to call them. I think the fragrance sounds quite interesting. Definitely want to try. It absolutely is interesting in the same way that you know, like Comme des Garçons Rouge, which I adore was interesting. Uh, I do like iris and amber, so I've got to check this out if it's in the US, says Aria. Um, and Rachel also says, I must check this out. Okay, we'll leave it there. If you're sticking around for another live, we will just come back in a few minutes with episode 400, where we're going to look at something that I think I've decided can count as a kind of modern classic. Uh, but as I said in a previous video, it's a little bit of a contentious classic. It's a classic that comes with a story. I would imagine you are all going to have a view about it. So hopefully um, you can stick around. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this one and I will see you in a bit. Bye now.